Wait, 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 there's one more thing. It makes me feel like it's valuable. Like what I do is value. Got a few moments here. I'm gonna talk to you about how I'm able to afford all the travel. The key principal element in affording the travel lifestyle is my girlfriend works for an airline and I'm able to get extremely discounted tickets on the off chance that there's an available seat. It's a standby situation. Like right now, everybody that paid for a ticket, paid full price for a ticket, is boarding the plane. And I'm sitting here, nervously wondering if I'll be able to get on at all. If there's an empty seat, then they do like a fire sale at the end, and the employees can pre-purchase the fire sale, sort of a thing. So I may not get on the plane, but I may get on at a very low price. So the most expensive part of the air travel, the ticket, is actually not expensive at all to me in said travel expenditure. Now, the only other thing you need is time. Time, that's the hard part for most people. My job, blogger slash comedian, affords me all kinds of time because I work all day long whilst traveling. This is my job. I know a lot of you guys are like, who paying you to go on vacation? Actually, that was just like one guy. And I deleted his comment because I loathe him. So the tiny bit of money that I do need, I make by doing stand-up comedy. One day I'll explain that to you. But for now, I'm just gonna sit here nervously wondering if I'm gonna get on this plane to New Zealand or not. So what did we learn? If you wanna travel the world for cheap, job at an airline. Boom, wave of disappointment. I didn't get on flight The Anna Marie is, is uh, working. So I'm gonna try to get on a later one. Even though the flight leaves like 35 minutes later than her flight, it makes a stop in Brisbane and adds five hours to the flight time. So I'll be arriving five hours later in Auckland, New Zealand than her, which isn't a big deal. She can just take a nap, and when I get there, I'll be there. If I don't get on this next flight, then I'm not going. And that is the game. Is there an empty seat? So this video could turn into either hanging out in New Zealand or hanging out by myself in Dubai. Wow, we didn't get on. That happened. Got all dressed up, nowhere to go. You know what I'm saying? Auckland, not gonna come. That's what's happening. It's all right. That's what happens sometimes. Sometimes you get on the flood, sometimes you don't. Hey, eh? I did not. It's all right. Total cost expenditure, 12 dirhams is about $3. So I spent $3 in trying to go to New Zealand and didn't get to go. But worth it, you know, all three of those dollars worth it you know just saying all right we gotta figure out what to do with the rest of the day the day is ours yes it's gonna be awesome i can already tell this looks weird huh first thing i thought we'd do today since we're on our own and we can do things that we can't normally do when our girlfriend is here, is I thought we would drive home without the air conditioning because she would never allow me to do that. As some of you may be wondering, how hot is it in Dubai, Danny? The temperature is currently 45 degrees Celsius. In regular world, that's 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So you know. It's hot. We're at 118 degrees. It is a sauna in here. Oh man, that is hot. 48 degrees Celsius. I think we're gonna win. 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That's gotta be a record. How are you feeling? Well, I'm hot. Hot is the feeling that predominantly, you know, it's in the car, it's everywhere, it's hot. Dizzy? No. I'm 100%. I could go all day! I won't, but I could. Almost home, 53 degrees Celsius. What is that in regular? Whoa, it's 127 degrees. Um, my immediate thoughts are, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. 53 degrees, mother of Troy. As you can imagine, it's hot. I've arrived home. Oh, that's weird. When you step out of the car, it's cooler. Okay, so maybe it was the heat in the car, or maybe it was just, or maybe it was the fact that I woke up at 6.30 this morning, but I just fell asleep when I got home, and now I'm up. But no, oh my god, it's such a beautiful view. It's so beautiful out there. Yeah, so I promised to do something awesome today, but it's really hot.
hot out there and my car is gonna die if I drive it. But maybe it won't, right? Right? Okay, plan for today or tomorrow if we don't, if it's not open. I haven't even checked the Google. I'm gonna stand like this. Museum Sharjah. Almahata. That's the one. Hours of operation. Let's find it on the map. That usually helps. But I feel like I should bathe because I did sweat a lot in the car. But before I bathe, I will do my exercises because that is an important thing. And then we will pick one of these masterful awesomeness thingies and do that too. Okay, that was about 25 minutes of pretty good cardio. The push-ups in there. Day one at it. <clears throat> you gotta start somewhere, right? Ooh, I'm guessing tomorrow is gonna be harder. <sighs> Although today was pretty tough. I ain't gonna lie to you. <sighs> Before some of you mentioned, yeah, I did. I did put shoes on because because this is no joke, dude. When that rope hits you, dude, it's for real. Ha, ah, you lose you lose concentration jumping over the window when she hits you on the toes. She stings. <sighs> Alright, let's take a shower and go check out a museum. <gasps> Okay, what a transition. Great job, Danny. You're really getting a hang of this vlogging thing. Thanks. I've kind of sort of come up with a plan, but it's kind of an anti-plan. I want to go to the Atmahata Museum, which is the very first airport in Dubai. The problem is, take a look at this. This this red section right here. Yeah, my car is is literally 12 years old, and it's starting to just, just, just every time it sits in the traffic, it gets a little hot, and all I need is that head gasket to blow, and then the, and then the whole thing turns into a big rock I have to push. Having pushed my 1986 piece of BMW almost three kilometers, I don't want to do that, especially in this heat. The Al Fahidi Fort. Have a look. See? It's 29 minutes away, but it's all green. So, you know, our car's totally not gonna overheat, right? And natural history museums are kind of a great way to get to know a place. They're like a Wikipedia page, but in real life. They close at 8.30 p.m., so we better hurry. Come on, let's go! We're here. I know, right? Getting better at the transition thingies. That's a big boat, huh? Very well maintained. Go learn about this place called Dubai, huh? Come on, let's go inside. Oh boy. How much is it? Three dirham? Shit about the coins from the car. The five or three dirhams like a dollar. Thank you. Do the... Punched a hole. <laughs> we'll be reselling this anytime. Where am I? It appears I'm in some sort of courtyard with boats. Let us explore. The Rambaba. Musical instrument played by the Bedouin, made with a wooden frame stretched goatskin strings of horse hair wow. tambourine made from wood and goatskin getting this real strong sense of there was an abundance of goatskin heart <gasps> made from wood deer skin that's how you know it was special old guns and stuff i'm guessing this is what a house used to look like not much for keeping the heat out smells like a wicker basket in here very cool by cool, I mean extremely hot. This here, this is the Alman Manma. It's a bed for sleeping outside in the summer because sleeping inside would cause you to die. Archaeological excavations at Hata al Quseis and Jumeirah reveal there was a high degree of civilization in Dubai area around 3000 BC, as well as the early and middle Islamic period. An Italian explorer in 1580 described the Dubai people as a prosperous community, its people engaged in pearl diving. Dubai first became an independent political entity in 1833 when 800 men of the Bu Falsa tribe under the leader Matkom bin Buti settled in the area. Most of the population settled in Bourg de Blay, which was surrounded by a defensive wall. Much like the one we've just witnessed. In 1894, they traded pearls, shells, and dried fish. Imports included sugar, pepper, rice, and cereals from India. Wood and cane from East Africa. Oh, wow. At least it's air conditioned. Hey there, person who just will scare the shit out of anyone. He must be an early trader. I will trade you these pearls for a bag of rice. Okay, sounds good. Upper representation of the bags of rice and spices. Perhaps what an old herb and spice shop looked like. Coincidentally, also what a herb and spice shop looks like currently. Dude is like 
selling dates and stuff. This chick is like gonna buy some dates. Those dudes got like a camel. This is an actual stuffed camel. It's an actual stuffed camel. I'm not gonna touch it. Ooh, look at that. They got sand. They brought sand into the museum. It's a nice touch. Here is a Bedouin dude with his wife. And uh, he's got an assortment of pottery. Bedouin society is founded on the need to move from place to place in search of pasture. It is a nomadic life. Always in the move, rearing their flock of sheep. The Bedouin belong to a tribe which is divided into branches, sub-branches, and families. They live with their relatives in a community bonded by blood ties and marriage. Tribes combine for their defense to preserve their existence and social customs. They share a joint code of ethics and consult their sheiks and wise men on important matters. Okay, goat herders, very Game of Thrones. A very Game of Thrones indeed. Behold, the Bedouin goat herder. Is that dust in the air? The other side of Dubai culture, of course, is the pearling and the coastal people, which is represented here by these dudes with their fishing nets, and these people here with their fish. And over here, we've got a pearl diving thing. That's kind of trippy. It's like we're underwater. That dude's swimming with a full on pants. And this is how we marry people. The old fetal position. They made pots out of clay. They're just like us. Just like us. Bronze Age daggers and arrowheads and what have yous. Oh, some of the jewelry, some of the finer things. Oh yeah, this is great. Ooh la la. Amazing. Look, you made a little necklace out of shells. I gotta be completely honest with you. I've been to a lot of these museums. In the Bronze Age, not that interesting. I mean like, I don't know. Not that I could make a better knife, but I probably could. How then did Dubai go from being a bunch of pearl diving goat herders to creating... Hold on, there's a better setting for this. <laughs> so this kind of answers the question. What do you get if you give a bunch of Bedouin goat herder pearl divers unlimited amounts of money for a short period of time? World's tallest building. I think it looks imaginary. I'm standing next to it and it looks fake. But it is real. I mean, I've been to the top of it. Can you believe it costs $100 to get to the top of that thing? It's a hell of an elevator ride. Unless you do like the Groupon deal, and then you can get up there for like 50. In 1963, they discovered oil. In 1966, the oil started to flow and a bunch of international companies came in and started pumping that oil. Now they had a very limited amount of oil, so they started to make plans for the future. Since 1970, pretty much the present day, Dubai in one form or another has just been under construction. Working under the auspices of, if you build it, they will come. Much like Las Vegas, Bugsy Malone. They thought if they built something big enough, and bad enough, and tall enough, that everyone in the world would want to come see it. So they started pumping money into their infrastructure, airlines, seaports. They became the traders, the doorway, if you will, to the Arab community. Something they were already sort of doing since the 1930s because of their uh, foray into the pearl market. Did they achieve it? World's tallest building. Behold, the world's largest single pane of glass. I think we answer the question of if you build it, will they come? Yes, they will come. And they will bring their selfie sticks with them. One of the most interesting things about Dubai, at least from my perspective, is how the Bedouin society seems to be crashing directly into modern society, if you will. I don't want to say that their culture didn't have a place in modern society, because it certainly does. It's right across from the old uh, Cheesecake Factory. That's actually happening. That's a Reese's peanut butter cup, and it's dancing. Check out that school of tuna fish. It's a lot of tuna fish. A lot of tuna fish. And that is a shark. Having been inside the aquarium and having asked the question you are now asking yourselves, they hand feed the sharks so that they don't, so that they're not hungry and they... I'm not gonna say that the Bedouin culture that used to be all about Dubai is is changing or has changed because of the influx of money, but that's a Chili's. It's a Chili's. Chili's. Behold the world's largest single plane of glass. And that's the vlog. That's vlog. It is. It is 4.17 a.m. That's a record for me. 
I was able to cut that together well the first draft. I haven't added any sound effects or music or anything, which will probably take another six hours. Boy! But I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna put head to pillow and take a little nap a -roo. Sleepy deepy deepy doo! But you get the general idea. Dubai is a magical place. We will explore further. Tomorrow, in fact. And by tomorrow, I mean later today. How much later? I have no idea. Vlog life is no joke, dude. Check me out on Instagram. Check me out on Facebook. And if you think this might be interesting to someone you no, uh, go ahead and shoot him an email. Be like, yo, check this out. Guy traveling around the world doing vlogs. It's pretty interesting. Check it out. I know I'd appreciate it. I know if I got an email from a friend who was like, yo, dude, this might be something you're into. And I chucked it out and it was like, whoa, that is something I'm into. I would totally be like, dude, thanks for turning me on to that guy. And that guy would, that guy is me. And I know I would appreciate the out of it. Anyway, I love you, my little lemon drops. Do join us tomorrow. When we continue, oh, I am part of work. Wait, 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 there's one more thing. Lee Whitaker, Andrew Lihowski, Christopher Switzmagoff, and Christopher the K. McKenna, as well as Ookman104. Thank you. I know you kids don't have to send me any money, but I appreciate it when you do. It makes me feel like it's valuable. Like, what I do is value. All right, then. All right, then. That was the thing. That was the thing. Okay, okay. I love you. Mm.